Um, we loved your ripples example. Um, is there a recent example of something that you think is a good template for how we should manage community challenges? Right. I mean, uh, to be honest, um, yeah, just sitting here and listening to uh, Dr. Sadia and Arzo, to be honest, it, it, expand, it expands your thought process and it leaves you with many questions. And I think the best of talks are the ones that just gives you threads to follow. And while I was uh, in my talk, preparing for my talk, subhanAllah, I came across so many material online that uh, had many templates, management templates, uh, many ways of uh, how to um, uh, pursue structures, uh, foundations for the way we work. And the choices are limitless. And while I was uh, uh, preparing for this, I found myself engaged and engrossed in what I was reading. And I said, SubhanAllah, what you need to do is to find something that fits you. And why did the ripple effect fall well with me is because of its simplicity. I felt that these are the things that I tend to do that are very simple. And maybe we even do it without knowing of this process, this mind management. And mind management is an area which intrigues me so much because when you feel that um, you have uh, immense power in shifting your, uh, your mind from, uh, I don't know, misconceptions or uh, certain old ideas and, and, and refreshing it and renewing it and all of this is available. And there's many tools that um, experts talk about and discuss um, it just empowers you. It, it makes you feel that you are the person who could change things, at least within yourself. And once you change things within yourself, that ripple effect, even as, as the word, not even breaking it down, that ripple effect will happen to those around you. So I think it, just by, you know, simplifying the process and not complicating it, you would find many. And I don't want to limit you, but reflect, identify, prepare, plan, evaluate, and, 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 and then inshallah, that will be success. That came as a natural process that maybe I felt uh, I was doing without even realizing. So I hope that uh, answers your question if I understood it correctly. Yeah, thank you. Um, next, uh, we can go to Arzu. Um, you spoke to culture being problematic in reclaiming our public roles. What can most most and community leaders do more. I ask about MOS too, because it plays a central role. Okay, that's a big one. I think uh, it's not for any, any one person to, to talk about. I think, again, it's about how uh, we all need an education process through uh, our existing leadership programs. Um, and that, uh, that education process needs to bring in the role of colonialism and the kind of structural racism that underpins the organization of our society. It permeates everything, including how uh, institutions work or how they are you know, founded and so on, whether it's uh, to do with policing, whether it's to do with uh, community organizations, whether it's to do with uh, governmental working, et cetera, et cetera. And while they might seem disconnected from what our mosques should be doing. Actually, as I was talking about that internalization process, which we all do, okay, this is not about any one mosque or blaming anyone. Uh, we lose sight of how to tackle certain problems and culture becomes just uh, invisible, if you like. We need to find ways to make the leadership of our community and our institutions be able to see culture. And it's not always the same culture. And often when we talk about culture as a problem to the realization of our rights, you know, we think I'm from South, a South Asian heritage, it's to do with South Asian heritage, or it's, if you're an Arab or an Iranian or whoever, Malaysian, it's to do with problems in those cultures which are un-Islamic. But we tend to forget that actually also the wider culture, which is permeating the way our institutions work, is also problematic, as I said, with that uh, issue regarding sexual harassment. So I don't know what the easy solution is. Uh, our leaders should be reading, our, they should be looking at certain ways of analyzing things. And there should be, a, I feel more exchange at that level between 
Muslims, both within the local context, which you could say maybe is the British context or regional British context, and worldwide. You know, sometimes we also think that, uh, well, we're, we're in the West, you know, we've, we've got it better here. I don't know that that's really the case. And I think we find good examples from around the world as well as bad. So it's easy for me to go, well, you know, that's what you should do. The Six million dollar question is, how is it that we can get our leadership to do that? And for that, I'm afraid I don't have an easy answer. That's what we've been trying to challenge ourselves to do and to challenge our friends and colleagues and those in leadership positions above us to do for, in the case of IHS, almost 25 years now. But I, you know, I don't think that's just our experience. But uh, if we can't get the leadership that's around now to do it, well, okay, people who are listening, you're going to be the leadership of the future. This is something you need to be wary of and, and to push for, even if you're not going to become a leader. Maybe you can get some accountability for it. Um, thank you for the answer, Zul. Um, next, uh, I would like to ask a question to Dr. Sadia. Um, what more can women do to help improve the role of mosques in our community affairs? Thank you. Um, I think uh, one, in current scenario, of course, we are longing when the masajids would be open and we are uh, actually missing our um, uh, halakas, our uh, you know get togethers, which we will be, we, we, we used to do. So I think if we are actively engaging and uh, uh, creating various uh, occasions where we can conduct courses, trainings, then, uh, and of course they are, uh, the publicity is done uh, well ahead of time. So then when the, when the brother side is uh, watching the impact or they're experiencing how this, uh, these, these activities which are led by sisters, um, is is bringing some good positive change in the society. And of course, when it comes to the relief project, especially with UKIM, because we are a relief-based charity. So our uh, more than 35 sisters uh, branches, as well as more than 50 brothers branches. So we are mostly based in masajid across UK. Uh, and uh, we feel that masjid should be the hub of the uh, Muslim community, and it should also be presented as a hub and a center of all the community outreach for the locality, for the neighborhood. But of course, there needs to be done uh, on, on a very, uh, I would say, upscale level. Sometimes we see that uh, the uh, events are created, but if the publicity is not done on, on right forums, and also the, the uh, I would say, um, the facilities are lacking, especially for disabled people or special need uh, children, we have to create the uh, crash facilities so that the moms can, working moms can join. Also weekend activities should be more, uh, you know, um, held more often and interfaith uh, activities, I think is something I want to work on when inshallah we have the chance to, um, uh, to have the uh, masjids uh, venues open to us then inshallah, we want to create these opportunities. So I think uh, a lot is already uh, you know, going uh, on, ra uh, rather I think was going on before this COVID um, lockdown, but uh, there is also a lot to do more inshallah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sadia. Um, there's one more question for you. Uh, what more can Islamic organizations do to have Muslim women represent and be on panels of prominent and landmark events for Muslims? Yeah, I think that is uh, an area which should be uh, focused more, especially uh, bringing in professionals from the uh, community and creating okay, uh, various uh, scenarios or platforms where we can be involved in decision-making projects. And of course, we are working towards working with the councils. So local council project, uh, even if we are working for community outreach, especially in COVID, we want to work with various uh, projects of councils where they need the help of those organizations who have funds, who are um, uh, well equipped when it comes to their volunteers, 
and they also have a good training of their uh, individuals, uh, basic training. And of course, when the council is involved in any project, then of course the outreach is far more uh, than our own local uh, network. And I think that would be something which uh, if we work and uh, also our brother side is already uh, planning and uh, making some um, project for this. So we are looking forward that once uh, our local um, uh, relief within UK, it is called eye care. So we are thinking that if we are working with um, uh, with local councils and one prototype or I would say pilot project is run in Masjid Ibrahim uh, in Plainstow, um, London. And that is uh, an excellent example how UKIM Masjid Ibrahim was uh, serving 500 meals a day and uh, it was given a huge coverage and they're also uh, using ambulance service for the uh, ease of, uh, you know, um, uh, funerals and all those uh, things in the community. And uh, it was it was a very good example how they are involved in many pro projects with the local council. So I think that would be an um, initiative which can bring in more professionals, more people. And then, of course, once we are noted that we are doing so much for the community, then maybe we can think that we will be involved in the decision making. Uh, process in, at, at, at some time in the future, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, thank you, Dr. Sadia. Um, next, uh, the question is to Raghat. Uh, what is the biggest obstacle to Muslim women pursuing leadership roles, themselves or patriarchy, or are things getting better for Muslim women? Um, I want to start with a positive uh, outlook. So I think things are getting better, alhamdulillah. Why? Because there's change within ourselves. Just talks like the, this, uh, events where uh, yeah, Muslim uh, women are trying to raise awareness as to the role. Um, something very simple that uh, Sister Arzo said to challenge injustice. And that's a, the sense of our religion, to ch challenge any injustice on any level whether it's the cultural barriers, whether it's physical. And I think that, that um, summarizes what our ask is uh, and what our life is uh, to, to, to keep on challenging those injustice and ask for, for justice. So if you are asking me who's responsible, it's a complicated thing. And I can't uh, point my fingers at either the woman themselves or uh, the, the society and, and the, the, the barriers that are placed upon us. But a lot of the challenge starts from oneself. And because we are here all trying to empower our sisters, I say, once you change your perceptions, once you decide that there is a, a bigger role that you should play and can play, that is starting to move, shift the mindset. And that on its own, subhanAllah, ignites something within you. And um, we start to change. Everything that was said, uh, talked about today, whether it's in mosques, whether it's in the per uh, perceiving of others, uh, of Muslim women, um, I think all of this will change once you believe. So uh, maybe uh, the obstacle, the inner obstacle, because we're so used to it, is us, but, uh, 20 years ago, and I think I come from a generation very close to Sister Arzu, uh, from the date she mentions, is we're, we're in such a, a better place. I was on the Committee of Leeds Grand Mosque when I was in my 20s, and I remember uh, one of the MPs coming to visit us, it was around the 7th of July bombings, and he fell off his chair when I said, I'm part of the mosque committee. So it's it, it, we need to push ourselves. We need to put ourselves in in in, in uh, outside our comfort zones to challenge things to be able to change it. But that will only happen if you're convinced that the role you're playing is important and is worth giving that extra effort. There is a lot of effort and there's going to be sacrifices, but they're going to be sweet successes in the Allah Ta'ala. And our life is all eyes on the prize. Again, as Sister Arzo said, if our eyes is on the prize and our destination is Jannah, everything is worth it. Everything is worth that uh, that price. So, uh, you know, it starts with yourselves. And if there's any barriers stopping you, then with your strengthened new mindset, honestly, we could shake things. We could transform the world, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, we, we could transform the world, inshallah. Um, the last question um, is to you only. Um, 
we we indeed had a great session today. What do you want to see next year, inshallah? Is that to, to who? Sorry, to me. Yes. Oh, still to me. Okay. I I mean uh, any event that involves young Muslim women, young and old. I don't want to be ageist. <laughs> so all women, uh, even men, and I love those uh, activities when we both collaborate because remember we're not. Uh, it's uh, as as Dr. Saida said, equi equity. It's it's like working together, each in our roles, with the strengths that we have to create a better world. So, um, the 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 the, the, <laughs> the sky is your limit. Whatever you think is a gap that we should fill, and that no one has uh, emphasized on or spoken about, then it's our area. Wherever there's uh, an area where we could shift to be better at, we are the first ones to go for it. We don't wait for permissions. We don't wait for people to take the first step for us to follow. Nothing stops you from doing so. So I guess if we're talking about organizations, each organization has their mission, their vision, and a set of objectives. And I think it's important to be successful is to uh, try to not only list those, but to truly uh, uh, apply uh, practical steps to be able to, su to, to succeed or to be successful. And it's very important to be focused. So we are all working in the fields that we claim that we're working. So for Strive UK, you're, you just voiced, you put forward what your commitment is, what your belief is. So if you sit together and decide that the priorities for next year is going to be tarbiya, empowerment, working within mosques, whatever you decide, then focus on that and push with all your power, with no boundaries, with no barriers that stops you. And believe me, if you succeed, uh, what we say is consistent, uh, uh, a few consistent is, is better than something suddenly happening and then it stops. So I think just continue the flow of the good work that you're doing and uh, in all fields and specify because you're a woman uh, side of organization. So push women to be empowered. And then inshallah, I think that they will be unleashed into many different areas that um, you won't even be able to reach, but they will. And that would be a success accounted for you in the day time. Thank you, Sister Rabbit, for that wonderful answer. Indeed, we all feel empowered um, listening all your talks. Um, with this, uh, we have come to the end of this program, and we thank you, speakers, for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. And I hope it has been a rewarding experience for you as it has been for us. Once again, thank you all for listening, and assalamu alaikum. <laughs>